Hello, thanks for watching. We're going to look at how to use JoinFS to cockpit share. This is using the default Cessna 172 in FSX, but you could equally use it in X-Plane or P3D. This doesn't use any inbuilt cockpit sharing functions within the aircraft. This is just basic default models. I have used it with some payware models. I was using an A2A Cessna 172 and my friend was using a default Cessna 172 and that worked equally as well. I see the inside of my payware aircraft, he sees the inside of the default model. So we've got two aircraft loaded up here, connected to join FS on the same hub so we can see each other at the end of the runway. On the left is the aircraft that um, the pilot's in, that's the one that we'll actually use for the flight. The one on the right is the aircraft that the co-pilot's going to get out of and get into the other aircraft. Firstly, the owner of the aircraft that you want to keep has to give permission for someone else to get into the cockpit. So you click View, Users, find the other user in the list, then in the Permissions box, right click, select permissions and then tick allow cockpit entry. This allows that one other person to enter your cockpit. It is possible to give everyone permission to do that, but it's probably easiest to just give individuals permission, particularly if you're going to be sharing controls later on. Once you've done this, a C appears in the permissions box so that you know you've given cockpit entry permission. Then the other person has to get into the aircraft. So they click view aircraft. They find the other person in the list, right click on their row and choose enter cockpit. Once they've done this, the vacated aircraft will disappear from join FS. It takes a moment to disappear from the other pilot's view. When you're both inside the cockpit, the original pilot still has the controls so they can move the yoke. The co-pilot can't. However, the original pilot can hand over the controls to the co-pilot. You can't share the controls. It has to be one or the other. So the original pilot goes back into join FS, uses, right clicks in the permissions box for the co-pilot and then ticks hand over flight controls. You'll notice that there are some other options as well. You can hand over everything to the co-pilot. Now if the pilot tries to move the controls you see them flicking about and if they move the throttle it does move but then it just snaps back to its original position. But when the co-pilot moves things they work normally. Let's take back the flight controls now, and a more realistic scenario would be to hand over the navigation and autopilot to the co-pilot. We've just used the auto start, control and E to get the engine running. And everything comes on except the avionics. They flicked on momentarily and then they switched back off. And this is because the pilot doesn't have control of them anymore. The avionics master switch has remained off. But when the co-pilot leans over and switches on the avionics, the radios come on as normal and the co-pilot is able to change frequency, set the transponder and fiddle about with the autopilot. Now there is an issue with the autopilot doing this sharing. Once in the air, the co-pilot can change the navigation controls, they can set the heading bug, they can turn on the autopilot, they can set the target altitude and the rate of climb, but it doesn't quite work. Here, the co-pilot has set a target altitude of 1,500 feet and a rate of climb of just 300 feet per minute. But as you can see, we're still climbing much faster than that closer to a thousand feet per minute 
and we go straight through 1,500 feet and just keep climbing. What's happening is instead of setting the altitude, the autopilot is controlling the attitude so the aircraft continues with the same angle of attack irrespective of the rate of climb and what altitude you're at, it's just fixed. And then we have a tricky situation where it's difficult to get out of this when the co-pilot panics and turns off the autopilot it doesn't actually release in the pilot's simulator so he's moving his controls but can't level the aircraft he can't turn off the autopilot because it doesn't respond because it's still under the control of the co-pilot so the top tip in this scenario is in FSX and P3D press the Z button the keyboard shortcut for autopilot on or off once you've done that then the pilot can take back control and return the aircraft to level flight the heading control works fine incidentally so the co-pilot can kind of control the altitude if the pilot sets the aircraft in level flight and then the co-pilot switches on what is now the attitude control uh, the pilot can adjust the altitude by adjusting power to bring in rate of climb or descent but the attitude remains fixed and in this scenario when the co-pilot switched the autopilot back on I guess because there's some residual nose up trim the aircraft pulled up sharply and then slowly dropped back down presumably as the trim was brought back under control so sharing the autopilot is a bit hit and miss to be honest. Now a further little glitch that I've found is if the pilot now were to hand over all controls to the co-pilot some slightly bizarre things happen in the pilot's cockpit the uh, avionics are flicking on and off and it just seems to be chaos and bedlam however in the co-pilot simulator everything's fine now they've got total control of the aircraft they can turn on the autopilot and it works normally. What I've found is that if the pilot did want to give total control to the co-pilot that should be done on the ground with both aircraft started up and running uh, before the flight begins. Changing controls uh, up in the air sometimes seems to be, give some erratic results. I've also noticed uh, another issue if one of the pilots were to open the door or the canopy the other pilot just sees it going up and down and up and down uncontrollably and even when the original pilot then closes the door or the canopy it just keeps opening and closing in the other aircraft so with these limitations in mind it's still a valuable resource particularly I find for teaching flying or sharing duties on VATSIM now I use vPilot to connect to VATSIM and if we look in the vPilot manual there is a section on shared cockpit they also call this observer mode clicking on that takes you to the details and the reason why they're calling it observer mode is that when you follow the procedure one of the pilots will effectively become invisible so the instructions they give is that the first pilot should connect normally then the second pilot should connect in observer mode and they should use the same call sign but with an A appended on the end. I guess this means that when they appear in the controller's list they're together and the controller can see that they're doing shared cockpit. But because the second pilot is in observer mode there will only be one blip, uh, one aircraft on the controller's radar. So Fred on the left is going to be the one not talking to ATC so he's decided to be the invisible person he's using the aircraft's call sign but he's put an A on the end and he's ticked the box that says connect in shared cockpit mode George on the right is going to be the one talking to ATC so he has used the normal call sign and is connecting normally so by connecting to join FS for the cockpit sharing and through the pilot client to VATSIM you can cockpit share on VATSIM no problem. 
Uh, I do it quite a lot. In fact, we've done it so that both of us have ended up talking to ATC at different times. And the controller seems to be quite happy with that. There doesn't seem to be any issue with both pilots talking. Okay, that's it. Bye-bye.